which will allow us to normal this tree, which will then allow us to use toucan, which will allow us to add advent, which will allow us to utilize eaglin, which will allow- My friends, what's going on? It's Ben Cap. We got Fluunderese today. We're just going to be going over how to play the deck from start to finish. Um, very key one to two card combos, how the cards interact, really just get you on your way. Um, to start off what we're looking at here, uh, I really want to just point out D-Shifter. I'm not going to be incorporating it in any combos, but you should be playing three of these, especially right now at the time of this video. It's tier limit, tier zero format. Um, you're going to be playing three. So just wanted to point that out before I throw it over here into the side. Um, besides that, uh, you know, you will see Mist Valley Apex Avian, Rise of the Mega Monarch, and Barrier Storm Winds. Of course, those are not Flounderese cards, but they're very heavily incorporated in the deck, and I will include them in combos. Um, so, Flounderese, the whole deck operates on Normal Summon, Normal Summon, Normal Summon, Normal Summon, Normal Summon. They all give you extra Normal Summons um, after their effect resolves when they are Normal Summoned. Um, so, uh, it allows you to play cards like Pod Duality, which restricts you from special summoning the turn that you use it, um, and a lot of other cards that a lot of decks cannot play. So, while I am on the case of Duality, I wanted to point out to you that Duality can be used in the same turn as Extravagance, but Extravagance must be used first. Um, and besides that, Prosperity, they can be used in any order. So. Um, really, it's up to you what you think is best. There is more consistency, consistency between these two in the sense that you can activate either one in any order. However, if you were to use duality and see extravagance, you cannot use the extravagance. So, um, that being said, you know, you'd obviously just add a different card, and this is a plus one while prosperity is not a plus one, but you do get to dig six cards deep every time because your extra deck has no say in this matter. For the most part, you're not touching the extra deck <laughs> ever. So, um, that being said, uh, there was a YCS second placement with Flounderese. This is the extra deck for it. I will show you that deck profile towards the end of this video, just so you can kind of summarize the whole goal of the deck. But for now, um, I did keep the extra deck in here just so I can banish stuff and, and move on to the combos. Um, but as you can see, it's not much to show for. Um, so you will be banishing six when you use this card. You're gonna grab the best card while this would be plusing one. So give and take, as is all deck building in Yu-Gi-Oh, um, really for you to decide. Besides that, cards you wanna just be aware of that are generally played are the Harpy's Duster, Dark Ruler No More, D uh, Fissure, Mystic Mine, um, it's kind of playing into Cerevitation, Necro Valley, Terraforming, Metaverse, you know, that field spell package stuff. Um, this is because the deck gives you a ton of room and what better way to fill that room than like extremely powerful cards. Yes, Mystic Mine is powerful. Sorry, we had to say it. Um, so, you know, alternatively, you can play things like Triple Tactics, maybe Lightning Storms. Um, cards that you like to play can fit in this deck with, with, with ease. So that being said, um, Regarding the extra deck, I would recommend putting a Harpy Conductor. I'm, I'm surprised not to see at least one when someone is building their list, just because um, a lot of people are either maining or siding Harpy's Feather Storm. I know that it's mainly used to, to have it set as you pass your turn, but to have the option, two wins makes the Harpy Conductor, and then you can just use that from hand. Um, you know, I, I think it's a valid reasonable thing considering a lot of the cards in the extra deck are irrelevant anyway um, but you wouldn't be able to really go off on the turn that you did that so I understand why it's typically not there but that being said um, let's jump in some one card combos and we'll progress from there into full hand probably and uh, we'll try to interact with the opponent a little bit so you can get some sort of idea of what to expect on the opponent's turn as well. Alright, so the first card we're going to start with is Flawanderese and Rubina. This is because Rubina is one of the big staples you want to have in your hand at all times or access to. Rubina adds a level 4 or lower Wing Beast monster to your hand. Um, 
just like all the Fluandri's monsters, something that we really want to understand before we get moving here. Very simple. Um, when a Fluandri's monster is normal summoned, it will have an effect. If that effect resolves successfully, aka it doesn't get impermed or negated or something, um, when it resolves successfully, you're able to normal summon a different wing beast from your hand. Um, that goes for all of them. So that being said, as for most of them that you will be playing, when they leave the field, they will be banished over here. And um, at any point that they are banished, when a wing beast is normal summoned, you're able to add them back to your hand, which you'll see me kind of, you know, cycling through. But that's something that you really just want to understand before we get moving is um, they get banished and they can get back to your hand whenever one is normal summon. So I'm going to go ahead and play with Rubina here. I'm going to normal summon it. Because it was normal summon, its effect will go off. I'm going to get to search a level 4, a lower wing beast. So I will be searching out Eaglin this, at this moment. This is because Eaglin also searches a card so that we can progress our play here. So now you're seeing because Rubina's effect successfully, successfully resolved, I am able to normal summon a different wing beast from my hand. I'm actually able to utilize the one that I just searched in this case, of course. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now Eaglin is going to search at level 7 or higher. Um, and that's where you're going to see the boss monsters. It's going to give you instant access to utilize one of them. Um, for right now, we're going to stick with the Flunderies monster M-Pen. So we've added M-Pen. Because Eaglin's effect successfully went through, it's asking if I want to normal summon additional monster at this point, and I will. I will tribute over both my smaller birds and get out our boss monster M-Pen. So at this point, we've got three effects to resolve. And why that is, is because upon tributing them, they were banished. And because M-Pen has been normal summoned and is a wing beast, we can add these two back to our hand. So very, very key point. You want to activate M-Pen first. This is because if the opponent decides that they wanted to stop M-Pen's effect for some reason, um, which, by the way, would be way more effective to stop one of these two probably before they get to the M-Pen. But anyway, um, we're able to chain these and add them back to our hand and block the M-Pen's effect from being negated. So, um, at this point, M-Pen is allowing us to search out a Fluandry Spell and Trap. Typically, you're going to want to go ahead and grab Dreaming Town. This is because it helps you set up for your opponent's turn to play on their turn as well. Um, so after adding that, like I said, because its normal summoned effect was successfully resolved, it is asking me if I would like to normal summon another monster. I am not going to at this time because I've already used both their effects and I don't really benefit from that. So I'm going to say no. We're going to set this trap card past our turn just so you can kind of see it in action. Say our opponent normal summons here. I don't like that very much. I'm going to activate Dreaming Town. It's gonna let me immediately normal summon a card from my hand. It has to be a level four or lower wing beast. Um, so you really need to start with one of the smaller ones. You can't just drop a bomb on the opponent randomly. Um, but of course they will give you access to that. We could go through the same motions that we did technically. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to play into something else because we only have one copy of each. So we're going to grab our Stri or Stry. Um, and again, because I successfully searched out the monster, I'm going to be able to activate. I mean, I'm going to be able to extra normal again and search out another monster. So maybe this time we grab the Mist Valley Apex Avian. Um, because we were able to successfully add that, we can go ahead and normal summon again. And we're going to tribute off these two and drop our Mist Valley card on the field. So at this time, um, those two were normal summons. So, I mean, those two were banished and a wing beast was normal summoned. We get to add them back to our hand, which is crazy. On top of this, um, Dreaming Town, when a level 7 or higher wing beast is normal summoned to the field... You're able to banish it, and you will put the opponent's monsters face down. So, um, Dreaming Town is a dagger. To, it's a dagger setup to just kind of crush your opponent's turn. 
you get even more advantage. I keep adding these back to my hand um, so that you really see the deck kind of flowing now. Um, let's jump into a different combo. So I just wanted to showcase something um, as far as one card combos go. Rubina is really the only one. You see that I really got moving with Rubina, but really if you have anything else, um, kind of stuck. You don't have any other way to normal summon um, from hand after adding with like Eaglin. Um, that's because, of course, it's a level 10. It requires two. So Rubina is typically going to be the only one you can move off of just one card. Alternatively, um, for instance, Stree's effect is to banish a card from either graveyard. Um, and when you do, you can normal summon from hand a different wing beast, right? In the event that you don't have something to banish or its effect doesn't go off, you can't normal summon again. So our turn would, you know, would be stuck here. Um, so it's something that, that you really want to pay attention to is that the normal summon effects have to be applicable. And typically that's going to happen with um, Stri and with the Toucan um, because Toucan adds a banished Fool Under Reese card to your hand. So if you don't have one, you can't normal summon after you normal summon the Toucan. Um, so I just wanted to show that show that to you real quick before we move on. So before we get into the spell and, spell and traps, um, I wanted to showcase the fact that if you've got you know these two in hand, um, you're able to put up a whole another level of defense. So Rubina here, instead of searching out the Eaglin, will be searching out the Stormwind instead. Because I successfully did that, I'm able to bring out the Eaglin who's going to search again the M-Pen. It's gonna let me normal summon again. We're gonna drop the M-Pen on these two, activate its effect, chain block with the two Flow Under Reese cards. Um, and also note, and I will probably show up when I do full test hands, sometimes you wanna leave one of the Flow Under Reese banished. You don't wanna activate all of them because you might have separate chains during your turn that you want to block so if you've got like three banished fluendries cards and you normal summon activate one don't activate two don't activate three that way when you normal summon the next card and activate its effect activate the other one in the banished zone you keep you can keep chain blocking as you kind of move through your turn which is huge for this deck because once one of them gets stopped you're kind of in trouble unless you've got uh other resources so um, M Pen is going to go ahead and add the trap card as per usual. And now, of course, just like before, I can normal summon a monster. And this time I do have one I would like to summon. It would be the Stormwind. So, again, Stormwind can't sum special summon anything but wind monsters. Um, this is typically the only deck that's playing wind monsters. So, it's kind of a shut off for your opponent. They have to get rid of it. And uh, in most cases, with Dreaming Town. If there's, if they were to summon something that could get over the storm wind, we can go ahead and start our play because again, it's just a lot of normal summoning it has nothing to do with um, special summoning. So we're able to do our whole thing. And in this case, we could add Ryza here, add Ryza and activate its effect by either tributing one monster that was a tribute summon aka m pen m pen was a tribute summoned onto the field we could actually just use m pen alone to get rise on the field not that we want to um so we're going to go ahead with the traditional w tri double tribute here because we're going to add them back to our hand anyway right the same thing here we can go ahead and chain block um and rise's effect is to target one card on the field and one card in either graveyard and potentially an additional card in the field if we wanted to. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and target that. Target this, why not? You don't need to target an additional card. So we're just gonna say no. Um, again, you're seeing here, I could banish this, put the monsters face down on my opponent's side. I don't need to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and activate my Rabina here. Get it back to my hand. And maybe I'll keep the Eaglin there depending on what's in my hand, depending on what follow-up I have. So you can see how if this deck goes first and you have an appropriate start, 
It's really hard to out um, between the Stormwind and the Rise of Play. It's very strong going first. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the Flundery spell cards. We're gonna start off with the Advent of the Adventure. This is because it's a quick play spell and I wanna detail something because I've already kind of noted if your effect gets stopped when you normal summon, you're, you're not in good shape. It's a bad thing. Um, it can kind of really hurt your turn and depending on what you have, it might just be done altogether. So, um, Flundery's Advent of Adventure allows you to banish a winged beast monster from your hand or the field and add a Flundery's monster or the uh, field spell from the deck to the hand. And then you get 500 life points, why not? A little cherry on top. So, um, why I'm detailing the quick play effect is if I were to just activate it, banish the Eaglin from hand, I get Rabina, cool. But, um, you want to try to make the most out of your cards. So if I were to normal the Eaglin and say the opponent chains Imperm to this effect or something else that targets the Eaglin, I am able to chain my advent and banish the Eaglin so that way that effect will miss its target. Eaglin's still going to allow me to add my card to hand here, um, but of course with Advent of Adventure, firstly, we're going to go ahead and add Rabina to hand, get our 500 life points, and now with Eaglin Search, we will add the M-Pen. So because Eaglin's effect successfully resolved as per usual, we're going to get to go ahead and normal summon again. We're going to activate Rabina's effect first, um, because we get to chain block with our Eaglin. So Eaglin's going to come back to hand, we get to search for the Rabina. Um, in this case, you're looking for something that can resolve its effect, so that way you can normal summon again. So if I were to add Storm Barrier here, um, I wouldn't be able to do anything after that. Same with the uh, Toucan. I don't have any banished Flundery card here right now, so this, this effect would not resolve, therefore I would not be able to summon the M-Pen. But one option we do have here is the Stree, which also sets up Toucan to add the Advent of Adventure back to hand at some point later on. So we will go ahead and add the Stree and Normal Summon to the field. And we will target our Advent to Banish, which will then, of course, the effect resolve. It has to resolve, has to actually apply. We get to Normal Summon our M-Pen from hand. So we'll hit these two off the field, get to activate the M-Pen and Chain our birdies from the banished zone back to hand at our dreaming town so um of course you can normal summon again if you have it you have it um but in this test hand we don't have any reason to do that so we'll go ahead and set dreaming town and now we're kind of set up just like we were before um thanks to advent uh being able to search out any flunderous monster is pretty crazy Alrighty, so uh next spell card is going to be the field spell of course i'm pairing it off with eaglin not for any particular reason, but mainly um, because Eaglin and Rabina, you're going to play at three each. They're like by far the starter cards. Um, typically the other two, two cannon street, you're going to play like one of each. Uh, so <clears throat> Rabina being the best, I typically just wanted to start with Eaglin just to you know, make the full circles and make the combo work. So um, we're going to start off by activating the Magnificent Map. Map allows you to reveal a level one in your hand. You banish a Flunderies card with a different name from your deck, and then you normal summon the revealed monster. Um, so that doesn't count as your first normal summon. So technically, map allows you to normal summon twice in the same turn. Um, that sounds really stupid considering how much you actually normal summon, but, but map's a good place to start or to have as a backup plan because you can activate it and you know get another monster going um, on top of that if your opponent normal summons a monster on their turn of course you can normal summon a flunderies monster from your hand so it's an interrupting type of card on your opponent's turn and it's a backup plan um, or combo starter for your turn so in this case if i were to just summon eaglin i would get m pen i would do nothing but with map and reveal the M pen. Now I can banish a Flunderies card from the deck. So something I really want to highlight about map is quite frankly, you're searching a monster because the moment this card uh, banishes and it starts its resolution, 
I have to normal summon Eaglin from hand. And because a monster was normal summoned, I'm able to add one of these back to the hand. So basically I'm searching Rubina here. Because, again, Eaglin's hits the field. We get the chain block with Rubina, add it back to my hand, grab the M pen, gonna extra normal because uh, Eaglin's effect resolved. Get Rubina. Now we can add the Stormwind. Um, get our extra normal because we successfully acted Rubina's effect. Banish these two. We have already used Rubina's effect to add back to hand, so we will only be able to add back our Eaglin. But we still get the chain block, of course. Grab our Dreaming Town, and M Pen is going to let us get our Storm Barrier on the field. So, there you have it. Um, map is extremely good. It's essentially a search card and an extra normal summon. And when the opponent normal summons, we can activate the map. We don't even have to activate Dreaming Town. We get M Pen. I mean, we get Eaglin onto the field. Activate Eaglin's effect. We'll get Rubina back to the hand. Let's go ahead and add Ryza maybe. Um, because, uh, because Eaglin's effect resolved, we can get Rubina onto the field. Search another card. Um, we could even, you know, if there was a card to banish, we could have the Street come onto the field. But just for example's sake, um, we're gonna go ahead and get these two off. Activate its effect. Bounce that away. Chain block with our Eaglin. Um, and yeah, we haven't even used the trap card. So um, that's how good map is. So one thing I wanted to highlight. Um, is the interplay between two cannons three. You won't be playing foolish, trust me. I'm just doing this for the combo sake um, to show you the interplay. So a lot of the time you might have a Flundry's card that's in your grave, not on purpose, it's just there. Maybe it's advent of the map. Um, maybe you wanna use the trap card again, I don't know. Um, but M Pen's one of the main targets that you'll see that sometimes ends up in the grave. Um, and Stri is able to, of course, banish either Graveyard's cards. Um, so you could banish your own M Pen, get the extra normal because that effect resolved. Uh, Toucan would be able to add the M Pen to hand. And because of that, we can go ahead and normal summon the M Pen from hand. So um, just to showcase that, because these two come second in most combos, they're not gonna be the first thing you use. Um, because their effects are a lot more particular, they also aren't adding cards from deck. So you typically are playing these at one. Um, but that being said, you do want to get them in rotation to being used and banished and added back to hand because they're extra bodies on the field, of course, um, that can be utilized for like Ryza or the Apex Miss Valley Bird. Um, so they're very good to get into rotation with all your cards. All right, so the next card we're showcasing is the Full and Reason Unexplored Winds. Um, this card is not really the first thing you're gonna go for, um, but it is an extremely impactful card. It can change the tide of the whole duel. Any time that you would summon a monster that requires two tributes, you can send one monster that you control and one card your opponent controls to the grave for its tribute summon. One thing people miss is that you can send a card. So you can send one of their spell and traps to suffice the two tributes. It doesn't have to be one of your monsters or one of their monsters, it can be any card. Um, so it's way better than some people realize. Um, on top of that, during your main phase, you can reveal up to two winged beast monsters in your hand and place them on the bottom of your deck in any order. Draw the same number of cards. So for the sake of this, I'm just gonna pass my turn and let the opponent put something on the board so we can actually showcase something. They're playing Kozaki Beatdown. Um, so let's go ahead and activate this. We're gonna maybe shuffle our Toucan away. Goes to the bottom. And we draw into Rubina, right? Um, so let's normal summon the Rubina. Let's grab our barrier statue because we definitely have Eaglin and Rubina access, so we're able to get that out at the end. We'll summon our Eaglin, and we'll grab our M Pen. So this time, we're gonna extra normal the M Pen, but with the uh, Unexplored Winds, we're able to send away the Rubina and the Kozaki, 
as its tribute cost and not two of my own monsters. All right, so this is gonna be the last combo I show. Um, it's really just to me a wildly different route to show how much this deck just can circle around itself and add whatever it needs to. Um, you can play it in many different ways. You can find different ways to, you know, get around stuff and do what you gotta do. So in this case, we're gonna activate Magnificent Map gonna reveal the Rubina. We're gonna banish Advent from our deck this time. Why not? Uh, Rubina is gonna search out our Toucan, which will enable us to normal summon that Toucan and add the Advent to hand. Now we of course could normal summon from hand because Toucan's effect resolved. We're not gonna do that right now because it's just Ryza in hand. Um, we're gonna activate the Advent, banish Rubina, and we're gonna add the Eaglin to hand. Um, we're gonna get 500 life points, why not? We are able to normal summon the Eaglin because before we used Maps Effect, so we still have our standard normal summon. I'm gonna do that now and chain block with Rubina. Add Rubina back to hand and we're gonna search the M Pen from Eaglin's effect, which resolved, so we do get to normal summon it. <clears throat> get these two off the field. Um, activate M Pen as well as Toucan and this guy. Um, this time we're going to add Unexplored Winds. Why not? Um, typically, you might want to do this if you have the Storm Barrier on the field. That way, they have a couple things to get, go through. The Trap card's just really a backup because if they remove the map from the field, um, you, you have no way to play on their turn. And that's very important for this deck. So, um, we're not going to extra normal here. We don't have any reason to. I've already used all three of these effects. I'm just going to activate this, pass our turn, to showcase how crazy things can get. So map, a normal summoned, activated our trap card field spell. We're going to go ahead and uh, utilize Rubina here first. Rubina is going to add the streak which will allow us to normal this tree. We're gonna banish the advent from our grave, which will then allow us to use Toucan, which will allow us to add advent, which will allow us to utilize Eaglin, which will allow us to add Apex, which will allow us to normal summon that Apex. And because of unexplored winds, we can use one of our monsters. We'll do Rubina and one of their cards which then Rubina can add itself back to the hand. So as you can see, um, <laughs> the deck is crazy good at what it does. And um, we're gonna jump into, just take a look at the YCS deck profile just so you can see it and we'll, we'll do like one test hand with it. All right, so here's the YCS deck profile. I uh, got second place recently. Um, just a quick peek at the side decks you can see what they're playing just to get an idea of maybe what you might want to play um they actually only played 14 if if anything that's what was recorded instead of 15 but there you go um they did have the Heather, harpy's feather storm in the side um as far as the main deck like i said it's pretty standard you're gonna be playing through shifter especially right now triple eaglin triple rabina then one of these two which is perfectly fine, it's all you really need. Um, the two boss monsters and two M pens. So technically you've got four boss monsters. Um, and they did have triple dark ruler and more. Like I said, the deck's extremely good going first. You wanna have some way to move about if you're going second. That's a good card, right? Um, you've got all these draw power cards and search cards. Um, they did actually play the triple mystic mine, terraforming necro, set rotation metaverse um you do what you got to do in a 2-0 format am i right <laughs> so um let's go ahead and do a test hand with this deck um that way we can you know shed some light to it and see what we get all right prosperity duality shifter eaglin that's why this deck got second how good is that um, do I duality first here, or prosperity first here? Um, I don't really think it matters, to be honest. What would I even be looking for with this hand? I, I guess Rubina or Map, um, just to hyper extend my advantage. So I will go ahead and banish a 
bunch of cards that I will not be using at any point, I'm sure. Mystic Mines, we got a Rabina. No spell cards for our Flundery stuff. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and grab the Rabina. And then activate our duality. Advent. Um, Advent would be good here because we don't know if by chance we might get imprimed or something like that. Um, but something to really think about too is right now it's tier limit tier zero and a lot of them are not playing like cards like imperm so it's all it's kind of a good a good place for this deck to thrive right now because there's not really many hand traps being played in the deck that mills 30 cards in one turn so um that being said at the same rate if they've got their sully x set already you're gonna need the advent to prevent yourself from getting stopped so just as an example i would properly add that um that way i can solidify my play going off so activate rubina if they did activate something i would chain banish my rubina um advent's gonna let us add a card to hand not just the monster so that being the case i would go ahead and add map here because i do have another level one in hand which is eaglin and i would search out probably stree um, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab two can. That's because Map's gonna let me banish a different card from my deck. So, I'm gonna go ahead and summon the Eagland. Um, activate its effect. We're gonna chain block with Rubina. We're gonna add M Pen. We're not gonna extra normal here, and that's because um, we're gonna use Map's effect to get that banished zone set up for Toucan. So we'll do that. We're going to reveal Toucan and we're gonna send, um, we're gonna be sending a card that we're gonna immediately gain access to. So I kind of would wanna maybe do unexplored wins because M-Pen could add a different card after that. Um, but you know, Stree's good to get in rotation as well. We already have the storm winds. I mean, we're sitting good, so. I will do the trap card first because it's more important I get the trap card to my hand than the unexplored wins. So we'll do that. Toucan will come out, snag us that card, get us our extra normal summon over these two, get them back to my hand. Do I want to save one for any reason? No, we're going to get them both back to hand here. And then. Uh, M Pen will go ahead and grab us the unexplored wins. So, pretty good setup. Couldn't ask for more. They're under Shifter as well. This game is this game's over. <laughs> so, just to play through it with you, so you can um, watch along with me and get used to this kind of stuff. The opponent would have to normal summon something here in hopes to run over the barrier statue because they have no other way to special summon unless they um, of course remove it by means of spell and trap which is very possible um, but in the instance they don't we're gonna get to activate our magnificent map here we don't need to use this the trap card at, the, at this time let's do our toucan grab our advent back get our extra normal we're gonna go rabina here Bina effect is going to add us the street just so we get access to that. Eaglin's going to go ahead and grab our potentially Ryza. So obviously if they could run over the Stormwind, um, you would want to do Ryza to protect it. But we've got unexplored winds, so we can grab the Avion instead and utilize our, say, Rabina and that monster. And now we've got an Omni Negate uh, as well. So, like like I said, you can imagine this, this, this match is over. This is a fantastic opening hand. I hope that this is a good representation of the deck. I know a lot of people do not like Mystic Mine. I am kind of there with you. You know, I think if you were able to at least attack with one monster, <laughs> that would make a world of a difference, but you can't. Um, so a lot of people don't like this, especially if you're playing 
you want to pick up this deck for the 50 bucks or so it might cost you so cheap um that you might want to be playing with your friends you don't want to be playing mystic mind because it's not fun for you guys take take this whole package out this metaverse set rotation necro valley mystic put in cards you want to you want to play with that are fun you don't feel like getting prosperities that are even at this point 30 dollars throw in the extravagances instead of the prosperities extravagances are way cheap right now um and that way you've got a, a further budget deck that still pluses one more than the prosperity you've taken out a package you've made room and you can play a bunch of power cards that you very much enjoy playing like maybe tactics or cross out stuff like that just have fun with it and find texts that make you happy uh, if you've got any questions about this if something wasn't clear to you some interaction didn't make sense comment i will totally get back to you and uh, if you got any suggestions for the Flunderies people who are looking to play this, drop them in there. I'm sure it'll help someone out. Catch you guys in the next one. Ben Cap is out of here.